Hi there. Welcome to day four of our study. Um, I'm back in Marshalltown. Actually, we were back on Sunday. Um, we traveled back from my parents, and so, yeah, I'm back here and, um, yeah, just hanging out and uh, making some more videos for our time of social distancing. So, we are finishing up chapter one in Ephesians, and we're going to move on to chapter two. Um, chapter one, uh, we saw God did a lot of awesome things in Jesus Christ. Um, I hope you had some awesome observations too. Um, if you ever want to text me them, I'd love to hear them just to see who else is joining me in this. Um, but just, yeah, hear about what you're learning, uh, from scripture. And yeah, um, so text me, call me, whenever. Um, so we're going to be looking at chapter two today and some more awesome things that God did. Uh, it has one of my favorite verses, group of verses in it, uh, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, um, talking about how we don't earn our salvation. Um, a lot of times we get in the mindset, and I totally was in that for a while, um, that uh, we can just do a lot of things um, to, we can earn, um, earn things for what we do. But this is not true when it comes to our salvation. Um, it's God's gift. And uh, it's because of his grace and kindness, great grace and kindness. And um, so it's one of my favorite verses um, as we'll read through it today. Um, so um, thinking of uh, our mental health tip for today, um, it's just to call someone today. Um, I've been trying to call someone each day uh, to just talk to a, another person outside of our house. Um, and just, uh, yeah, just try to be an encouragement to someone or just hear someone else's voice and hear how their life is going. Um, it's good to check in on people. It's good for your mental health. But um, it's really easy. It'd be really easy to just call someone that, a friend that you'll know, you'll laugh with, and, like, it'll feel really good to you. So my challenge, like, go ahead and do that. Like, call a good friend that you'll laugh with and, and have fun and really enjoy. Um, but my challenge is to then even call someone that <clears throat> is, um, it's maybe not going to be the easiest conversation. Um, you won't necessarily get along or have a ton to talk about, but, um, it'd be a person that is, when you think about them, they're in a lot of different, they're in very different circumstances than you are in right now. Um, if you are surrounded by uh, people that are reminding you of the truth and other people that have the same hope as you, um, think of someone that is not in those same circumstances, that maybe doesn't have people reminding them of truth or of just um, maybe this person doesn't even have the same hope that you have in Christ. Um, so try to think of someone that you could call um, and not just chat about whatever or whine about what's going on, um, but someone that you could encourage, speak a truth into, just check in to see and show that you care how they're actually doing. Um, so that's the big challenge for today um, and just something that's good to be calling and talking to other people. Um, good for you. So call somebody. It's good. You can help other people. I know you guys communicate. FaceTime's really good you can FaceTime with someone to see someone's face, I think is even better. Um, I know you're calling people or talking to people, texting them, but call someone. Okay. Off of that and on to our reading uh, for today. So we're going to go into chapter two. This is the intro day to chapter two. So you're just going to open it up, um, read through it, and just really um, just enter into the text and kind of what it's saying. Think about where we're at from chapter one, um, and then we're transitioning yeah, to chapter two here. Uh, enter in, make observations, um, just yeah, get a handle on it. Um, so this next part I'm going to read, and feel free to shut me off if you want, um, but I'm going to say a quick prayer and then read. Uh, God our Father, Thank you for all you've done in Jesus. Um, thank you for your great gifts, God. As we read 
about your great gift of salvation today and, and other wonderful, amazing things you've done, Lord. Please open our eyes to these truths. May we believe them and just may our hearts just uh, take them in um, and be softened to all that you've done for us and uh, all that you will continue to do. Thank you, God, again for all you've done. Um, open our eyes. Give us understanding as we as we read your words. Amen. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> and you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously lived according to the way of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath, as the others were also. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised, which is done in the flesh by human hands. At that time you were without Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. In his flesh he made no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in regulations, so that he might create in himself one new man from the two resulting in peace. He did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. He came and proclaimed the good news of peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole building, being put together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. And that is the end of chapter 2. I hope to see you back for day 5 tomorrow, where we'll look at chapter 2 again some more. Bye.